Hello, Vancouver. My name is Christina Andonov. I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS, where I help organizations adopt GitOps uh, for services as well as infrastructure and related open source software. And here with me today is Carlos Santana. I'm Carlos Santana. I'm a EKS Specialist with uh, AWS. And I work with customers on helping them build platforms, uh, internal, internal developer platforms, as well as working with EKS. And today we're going to talk about the values of GitOps. We're going to talk about four most, co most common misconceptions we hear from organizations. I'm going to show you a live demo and send you off with some tips. So by now, we're, because we're at CityCon, GitOpsCon, I know you have seen this slide so many times, and I promise I'm not going to go over, um, over them, uh, over the, um, the GitOps principles, but however, we have to talk about the values of GitOps, because tomorrow and next week, you're going to go back home and you're going to say, uh, GitOps is great, you, you're going to be all pumped up and let's implement it. Um, and the business will say, well, okay, but why do we have to change our tooling? Our, everything is working as is. And so you're like, look, it's great that does pull, it does consistent, continuously reconcile. And they're like, mm, that's not justification enough. So I think we talk about the principle of GitOps and to us as engineers, this uh, um, speaks a lot, but to a business person, this doesn't mean much. So what is the value? What is the value of being able to express the system declaratively? Well, we all know the story about WeaveWorks, how somebody pushed the wrong button and they brought production down and they were able to bring it back within 40 minutes. So what does this do? It reduces business risk. Even if you don't have a disaster recovery, you can bring up services in a matter of 40 minutes in that case. Uh, the second one, um, if we can version the whole system and we can track those versions and who did what when, well, that enhances our ability. So our com compliance team should be happy. Next, um, it's a pool-based system. So here we go into the pool versus push. What is uh, the benefit of using pool over push? Well, when you use push, you have to expose an API in endpoint to push into. Hopefully that API endpoint is also protected by some credentials and those credentials are stored somewhere outside of your system. So if you don't have to push, you have to pull, you don't have to expose um, that endpoint, you don't have to store credentials, it boosts security. So security team should be happy using GitOps. So what is the value of continuously reconciling the state of. Well, let me tell you, in a previous life, I've been an SRE. I held a pager. And at 2 a.m., I promise you, I'm not my highest self. If I can do a manual change and go to sleep one minute early, I'll do it. <laughs> so continuous reconciliation enforces the whole process and keeps, keeps it all together. So there are organizations that do know what the benefits of this is. And I talk to them on a daily basis. And keep in mind, those are organizations that are doing PCI compliance, HIPAA compliance, SOC2 compliance. And the end user, I'm like, so are you doing GitOps? Well, we're doing parts of it, but not the whole thing. And it's like, you, you do know, like your audit process, your compliance process is going to go better. They're like, mm, yes, but this is not going to work for our process. I'm like, really? Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, well, what they tell us is, we kind of summarize it in uh, four most common misconceptions, uh, and Carlos is going to go over them. Sure. Thank you, Christina. So, Let's start with, we, we pick four, and this is based on uh, customer uh, interactions and users of enterprises that they want to modernize the platform. Uh, wait, I'll go to the other one. So we pick four uh, of the most common 
things that these end users tell us when we talk to them about modernizing their platform or modernizing their SRE or modernizing their, their basically how they deploy software. And it's, it's very uh, useful to hear the same story over and over. It's similar stories. So these four stories are happening um, in the conversation. Come, they come up and it comes from a misconception or their perception of what GitHub is because they're, they have not done it. They want, they always say they want to do the GitOps. Like they, they, they're, it's in the plan, so it's in the backlog. It's usually in the backlog, but they want to do it. So we try to uh, clarify some of the misconceptions that they have when they, they're working with GitHub. So first one is uh, that they think that GitOps means uh, once they code, like the Python code, the Go code gets um, uh, merged into Git, it goes straight to production. That's the perception. Like uh, we've been using Git, and they the before Git they were not using Git, right? So they went to Git, they're building software, and they think that it will go to production. And we try to say, well, actually the code doesn't go to production. What goes into production is the configuration of the application, the how the config how the configuration of the of the application, meaning like the how much memory what are the requirements what are the dependencies and also like what is the version of the application that you want to deploy so it's the configuration that we're talking about that you that's the artifact or the configuration is the one going to production so it's the definition so that's the first one the second one is um GitOps cannot contain manual cd gates and when we when we talk about cd gates is um an opportunity to have control because that's how they do things today. Usually they, they don't want to change something that they're do today, right? They can improve, they, don't, they know they how they can improve, but they're averse or have friction to change. So they also, they, what they want, and they pick the tool, actually they have picked the tool. Some other tools give you kind of a plan or a manual steps that they can check of like, well, I'm going to verify that the, that the change that is going to happen, I have control that I can expect it manually, um, I can check and verify, and we can tell them, well, with GitOps, you can actually have an opportunity to do that manual check, and it's called merge request for whoever uses GitLab or pull request for GitHub, and it's the same concept. It's like the, the aspect of having an opportunity of like, this is the proposal. This is the proposal of the change, this is your opportunity to run CIs and do C CD gates, and also manually decide that you want to, you don't want to push to production today because today is Tuesday. They want to wait until Friday at 5 p.m. Right? Like that's always, always right? a good idea. You always push at 5 p.m. So you can have. That's where like people are like getting into like oh, so there's a, actually a a management aspect of shifting left of managing that that what's happening in production is like a projection of like the software being delivered, managing now from Git. So they need to learn like the Git tools, the Git workflows that they that developers use. And these are people that don't do developments most of the time. These are platform folks or DevOps engineers that their role is make sure that the software gets delivered, released, right? Um, and they, they don't, uh, usually we have, I've seen personally, people that don't work with Git, they start learning Git as they, they come into Kubernetes and start working GitOps, it's the first time they have worked with pull requests and GitHub Actions and things like that. We'll see GitHub Actions in the demo. The third one is GitOps cannot integrate with existing ticketing system. So they say like, aha, we can, I found a way, right? They always find, try to find a way of saying like, we cannot use GitOps because X or Y. So this is one that they come in saying, we cannot use GitOps because we use Jira or we use ServiceNow or we use our own uh, ticketing system internally and they have been working for us for years and we have already passed regulations and validations and compliance. So we have a ticketing system that this is how we release software. How can we just drop that and do GitOps? And what we tell them is you can actually incorporate the ticketing system into the GitOps workflow by having the CI, the, the GitOps um, workflow interact with the ticketing system, and you will see that in the, in the demo. And the last one, there's many misconceptions, by the way, I can go forever, but these are the four. The, the last one is um, they don't have control of promoting from dev, stage, and prod, and 
I don't, I don't know if I want to ask, but many, many organizations has two prods. They have prod and pre-prod. And I always I smile because I kind of like a UIT, uh, the where they do integration tests. But I, ultimately, the software runs in one in one cluster. Uh, they don't have two. So, but they call it pre-prod because they make it feel good. But at the end of the day, with GitOps, you can do a rollout in a in a in a orchestration way. And this is kind of like um, the demo that we're going to do of doing that uh, like this. Uh, and this is a pattern that you you can implement it with any backend system. Christina? All right. So um, here you see the de uh, a, a change going to dev stage and production. Um, in essence of time, in a live demo, we're going to remove the stage, but you have imagination. So imagine it's still there <laughs> uh, for some reason. So here I wanted to point out uh, in this diagram, it doesn't say the code is stored in GitHub. It doesn't say we're going to use, uh, for CI, we're going to use GitHub Actions. It doesn't say for CD, we're going to use Argo CD. This is because this is a pattern. You can plug and play any of the um, Git repositories, like it will work with GitHub, GitLab, Code Commit. Uh, it's going to work with pretty much any CI system. You can do Argo workflows. Uh, Tekton, whatever you wish, and then for CD, you can, you might as well uh, use Flux, uh, and then for the ticketing system, we're going to use Jira, but it can be ServiceNow. Any uh, ticketing system with API can do this. We're just hitting the API. All right. So, no further ado, let's move on to the demo. So how a code change starts, if you're a regulated organization, it usually starts with a ticket. And right now, we have a ticket. Change welcome message. And I'm gonna assign it to myself. So usually, this is my personal JIRA uh, account, but if you're an organization, there's this GitHub toolkit here that you can enable that would um, that can connect your GitHub account with Jira, which means if you prefix a branch with the ticket name, so I can, I can say, you know, this is demo 11 welcome message change branch, it's automatically gonna show up here and it's gonna show me all the commits and everything else I need to know, so okay. And then I'm gonna start working on it, so I'm gonna move it to in progress, great. So right now um, I am uh, imagining I'm a developer. So this is my application here and this is where I'm gonna do the code change and we're gonna go over the repo after that. So this is my code and I'm gonna change the welcome message. And commit. Um, I can name my branch with demo. Okay. Uh, and then I'll say, okay, great pull requests. And here you do have someone who would review the pull request. That should not be the same person opening it, but for the purposes of demo, that's me. And I'll say this is for demo 11. So I'm gonna merge the change. So while this is going on on the back. So this, what this change did is just, it just kicked off a GitHub workflow. And that workflow is gonna go and it's gonna use this uh, Docker file and go releaser to go and build a Docker image. It's gonna version it, it's gonna bump the version. So right now it's dot .16, so it's gonna bump it, version it, release it. It's gonna be dot .17, it's gonna push it to my ECR um, Docker repository, and then I have two 
um, Helm values file. So I have a Helm chart and that's in a different repo on purpose that is managed by the platform team. This is the development team owning this and I have one values file per environment. Um, earlier today I heard it's a good idea to do this in folders. So having um, dev folder and production folder and then putting your values there because later on you might need to add, I don't know, some infrastructure YAML. <clears throat> so uh, my uh, GitHub Actions pipeline uh, CI will go build this image, push it to ECR and come here and it's going to update this tag once it's done. And one, once it's updated, uh, Argo CD will pick that up. Uh, so it picks the Helm chart plus that values file and it uh, deploys my application, which actually it did get updated. And let me make this bigger because it says hello Vancouver. Um, I do have another, um, the, my production is still not updated. It's, it says hello world. All right, let's go back here. So when this pipeline runs and it updated a few seconds ago, uh, on a successful deploy, I have set a post sync hook and that hook is supposed to go back to GitHub Actions to my CI and trigger another workflow. However, there is a currently a bug uh, and you have to actually click the sync button for that hook to run. <coughs> Sorry. I, I did speak to uh, some Argo folks and they picked up that bug so it would be fixed uh, shortly. So right now that you saw that git uh, hub post hook run and what it did, it, it came here and um, let's see, I should have a pull request and it opened a pull request for me. So this is my manual gate. This is where I come and I review the change and I say, okay, I'm, the, uh, I'm updating to the next version. And I can say, yes, sure. I, production. I tested this, it's good to go to production. And this, uh, I'll say this is for demo, my demo 11 and I'm gonna merge. So we go production on Tuesdays. Okay, so. Yes, we go production on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. because we like to keep people awake. Uh, so coming back here, my, um, my production app should update shortly, but let's go back and check on that Jira ticket, right? And let's, uh, oh, see, it's done. And let's go back and let's trace what happened. Okay, so Christina pushed, uh, created this new version, built and pushed to registry, then deployed it to dev, and then deployed it to prod, and then the ticket is done because it's successfully deployed, deployed to production. And let's see, this is prod. So it's successfully deployed. Hello, Vancouver. Yes, hello, Vancouver. And that is uh, our demo. With that, I'll... Don't clap for the demo. And the demo gods. <laughs> and works. the Wi-Fi. Whoever and set the up the Wi-Fi, wi yes. thank you so much. Please, the Wi-Fi. And I'll hand it off to Carlos. To do the tips? Yes, to do the tips. Okay. So uh, a few tips uh, were uh, for, for Git is to use authentication for your your teams. And you can use things like uh, co-owners, but authentication meaning that if you're using a Git repository, um, how Argo, can, it will connect to that Git repository. And in enterprises, usually what they do is they don't use username and passwords, they use SSH keys. Also in some organizations, they like to run their own, for example, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, so they have to set up their own uh, TLS and CAs and have that authentication um, and um, have that authentication. And also it, in, in Argo, there's also a, the other way around. 
GitHub contacting uh, Argo for the webhook. There's a webhook instead of Argo going every 30 minutes to check if there's a change. You can configure, for example, like your Git system, GitHub or whatever it is, GitLab, to talk to Argo. It's a, it's a best practice to configure it with a secret and, and having TLS. Please do not set up, we see this a lot, setting Argo um, with a self-signed certificate and clicking that like ignore TLS, that's, that's very bad because somebody can trigger something to pull from some other branch or, or another repo. Um, branch protection, that's a feature, I don't think GitLab has it, but GitHub has branch protection where you can configure many rules. I, I, after a few years, they, have, they started with a basic protection, but they has now, um, I've been using it in open source like Kubernetes uh, upstream, we use it a lot. Tecton, we use it a lot. Argo, there's many CI gates that are come uh, as a protection of that Git branch. And also like for somebody that doesn't, you don't want anyone to remove or delete the main branch. And the last one is code owners. Um, actually GitHub didn't have this, was a feature that was implemented in the community. And then they added code owners where um, you can have, everyone has access to the Git repo to work on it but usually it's through pull requests and merging, reviewing or merging, you can configure of folders, for example, who owns which folder based on code owners. Um, and that's some, some small tips uh, on there, but the, the big one is um, when you're working with organizations that are like apprehensive or they have restriction, the resistance to adopt GitOps, there's a pa there's a there's our patterns uh, like Christina showed one of the patterns of like you can orchestrate the CI gates you can you can interact you can integrate your your ticketing system you can add automation to a certain levels of of deployments or like dev and stage and then have manual controls like that's okay to have manual controls the, the idea is to make the system the process better than it was last week or yesterday, right? We don't have to do full automation day one, but if they want that control, they can have that control until they feel, maybe they go up to production for the next year, having that manual process that they, at the end, they, they, they do that manual uh, pull request, but automate enough that they can feel comfortable adopting GitOps. Um, I don't want you to summarize. Um, yeah. So. Last one on auto-merging PRs. If you have a compliance process, and that's a fair warning, if anything is auto-merging PRs, in this case, GitHub Actions, even though they're going to a dev cluster or a staging cluster, make sure you put it in the message and you state clearly that this is not for production. If you decide to go full circle and are comfortable deploying to production without merging and you need to update your process, uh, then you work with the compliance team. There is ways to do it uh, and remove that manual gate, like a human gate, you gotta update your process and that is a little bit more complicated when we talk about production. Uh, you have to make sure you have documented the process of deploying to production, meaning what tests are run before that, what happens if the post tests fail and the deployment is, is unsuccessful, does the is the change get rolled back, who gets paged, where does it send, and so on. Everything has to be documented uh, if you're doing any type of compliance and <laughs> using auto-merging for production. Um, so with that, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, we talked about the CD gates and um, how to put CD gates, and we put the CD gates in the CI. <laughs> so that's where you put them. Um, and with that, uh, you can check out the EKS workshop. It has a GitOps section and um, try it out. And thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Have time for questions? Or? We have six minutes. Yeah, we have time for questions. Okay. If Any questions? Go ahead. Do you have any tips for how to deal with um, commit signing in GitOps processes? So the fact is basically signing the reconciled commits. 
in terms of um so for example i could simply use the same gpg signing key and sign every commit that's pushed back into the repo with that but that might be an issue from a security perspective right because they don't want me to use the same key for every for everything um i think yeah. that would depend how you structure your git repositories uh if you divide your the changes to the to the yaml files or the configurations you have one repo and versus the one for the uh, code, like your, your Go code on your Java code. In that respect, um, we don't we haven't had that experience uh, with customers in terms of uh, Git signing. But I know that Billy is here from ChainGuard. Uh, they have a lot of um, open source tools, and he gave a talk. That's some uh, good question for him on on Git signing versus. Um, and he ha they they really have strong opinions on either using SSH keys or GPG keys and if GitHub is, are rendering them or not. So that's basically my personal knowledge of working with, with ChainGuard, but that will be a good, uh, try to catch him today. Great talk, first of all. Um, one thing is that uh, you gave me an idea with uh, adding Jira uh, or uh, some sort of CD gate. So how you tied, for example, when you have a pull request and you have also a Jira ticket, because it can uh, be like a nightmare to try to tie uh, the different uh, in progress or to do or uh, done, and also the uh, pull request if you are not using the automating. How you can, uh, for example, tie to these different states? And you did it in demo, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Um, so how do you tie it? You have uh, GitHub Actions has uh, actions for Jira, and those are by Atlassian. So they're, I, I try to use like mostly certified actions, and they have an action where you can, um, so one of the, th there are two ways to tie it right now if you use those actions. One of the ways is to put the ticket in the commit message. And the other one is to prefix the branch with the ticket and and then grab it from the, the branch name. So you can either get it from the commit or the branch name. All right, thank you. Any other questions? I have a follow-up to that um, wonderful presentation. When you approve the PR, I noticed your ticket moved from um, pro in, in progress, progress to done. Yes. Is that a function of the action? Okay, okay. Yes, it's so we, um, essentially the ticket wasn't done. We moved it to done with the action from the demo. You might want to do that as a Argo post sync hook because you really want to make sure it's deployed properly and then maybe run the validation test and then move it to done. So. Uh, for the demo purposes, yes, I did it with GitHub Actions, but uh, if you want to do it uh, properly or better, you can put it as an Argo posting hook. Yeah, and this and uh, the demo that Christina did is in, in GitHub. Do you have a public? I, yes, it is uh, Under public, your account? Under my account. Yeah, so it's, it's a very simple uh, example that you can build on top of it, but uh, when you go, I mean, this is... You're not going to release like your enterprise banking software with, with this demo, right? But like Christina <laughs> said, Argo CD has, um, and there's all the talks that have mentioned it, the, the hooks, and they're very powerful. Uh, the post sync hook is very powerful because I have used it in other enterprise customers where the post sync hook actually would tell, would, Argo would know that the app is up and it's running you can actually go and run a something like J meter, right? Uh, depending if it's staging, and then do your testing, like trigger things from post sync. So not that you're going to do all the work there, but you can trigger something like Tekton or trigger something like Argo workflow that actually does the validation. And then you, tr you be uh, in one of those steps, it will talk to Jira, for example. But in this case, we made it very simple as for someone that has never seen this much automation, it feels comfortable like, I can build on top of it by learning about the Argo, C Argo CD uh, uh, hooks. There's different ones. 
Um, I work for an Atlassian partner, so maybe I can get some input here. Um, Jira actually has an automation engine built in, and there you can say when a pull request is opened, then do the following actions. And the actions can be add a comment, transition an issue, log work, assign this user, so get, you can configure anything. Yeah. Yep. And that works for GitLab, GitHub, and uh, GitHub and Bitbucket. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.